Yeah, we're back on the sports match zone now, turning our attention to schoolboy football in Jamaica. Schools continuing to fall afoul of the eligibility rules in the Intersecondary School Sports Association, ISA, Digicel Manning and Water, the Costa Cup competitions. The latest, Kellett's High from Clarendon and Inswood High from St. Catherine. In a statement released to the press on Friday, ISA revealed that both Kellett's and Inswood have been suspended for the remainder of the 2023 Manning Cup and the Costa Cup competitions with immediate effect for fielding ineligible players. Additionally, ISA also revealed that both Kellett's and Innswood will be ineligible to participate in the competitions in 2024 because of the serious nature of the infractions. Competition organizer, president of ISA, Keith Wellington joins us now. Keith, welcome to the Sports Max Zone. Great to have you on. Disappointing that these stories continue to surface in schoolboy football in Jamaica, as it has in Trinidad and Tobago as well. I remember some years ago a school being banned from the competition because of uh, ineligible players as well. Um, this latest, uh, clearly more serious than the previous ones we had with Heidel and Jamaica College. Can you talk to us about the Kellett's and Innswood situations? Hey, Lance, uh, thanks for having me and good evening to your viewers. Um, yeah, so we had a situation um, with both Kellett's, very similar situation where it was reported to us that each of each school had a player that was participating um, for the school but was ineligible to participate. Essentially, both players, both, both players were not registered um, with ISA to participate and they were not students at the school either. Um, so we found that there was a breach uh, in terms of how they were allowed to participate. And um, both schools admitted to the fact, and therefore we took the actions you described. Mm. Um, but how, how, how much of a defense did the schools put up? Because if you say they conceded to the infraction, it begs the question about you know, the efficiency of their system in, in putting players out to represent them because this is, is I, would, I would say, scandalous. Yeah, it is, it is Lance. Um, we, are not yet com we have not yet completed the process of investigating, but um, having, lear having learned of the situation, we spoke with the principals of both schools who did their own internal investigations and reported back to us. And therefore, we took the action that we have already taken on that base, on the basis of the reports that we would have gotten from the school. Um, we are now continuing the investigation into looking at who are the individuals who are complicit in the matter. And further actions are likely to be taken at those, against those individuals that have um, facilitated the process that allowed those persons to participate in the function. Yeah. Are the reports we are getting true that? Um, like fraudulent pictures and so on w would have been attached to other documentation to, um, to you know, create the, the impression that a player was at the school and actually wasn't. Right. So essentially, um, they were able to, to get away with it by registering, duly registering someone is a member of the school and who have met the eligibility criteria but then now using someone else's, the person who they intended to play, using that person's photograph to create the ID for that person, um, using the other person's data. Hmm. I seem to remember, as I alluded to just now, Keith, that Trinidad and Tobago's SSFL did have a problem with this some years ago, and, and the school was banned from the competition and demoted, I think, from the premier to this to the second level because they do have a tiered system there and i seem to remember a discussion about um a criminal offense um yes, because based yes. on what you're saying it it does warrant that kind of treatment doesn't it i certainly think so i think that it, it, it is fraud um in every sense of the word um we we are we are continuing the investigation and we will expect that not only will we take action, but we expect that the schools involved will take their own action as well. And if needs be, it may become a police matter.
Keith, but what's happening in these schools? Because I feel like every week when I come on the show, one of the topics we're talking about is, you know, the ineligibility of these players. Um, do you think more has to be done to, of course, educate um, these coaches and players and principals? Because it's becoming a regular occurrence. I think so, and I think one of the things that why we're insisting on taking this action as well is to send that message. Um, it's interesting that you spoke about educating um, the persons involved. Well, last Friday, we had a principal's meeting, and I invited the Honorable Mike Fennell, as everyone knows, is an outstanding sports administrator. And, you know, we invited him to have a discussion with him about the issue of integrity, sporting integrity, and it's important, as well as accountability, because while our principals may not be directly involved in coaching and managing the teams per se. Ultimately, they are accountable for the team that represents the school. So I wanted um, Honorable Fennell to just share with them some of the, the issues that, that, that may arise. We do not ensure that there is integrity in our competitions and that they, the principals, hold those persons around them, around them accountable for what happens with their teams. So from that perspective, yes, I agree with you 100%. We also, at the end of last school year, we actually revised our, did a re revised edition of our rules. We circulated hard copies of these, these rules to all our schools, as well as shared soft copies with our various coaching groups. So we're trying to ensure that everyone understands, know, well, first of all, know the rules, and then understands them, and then accepts them, because I think part of the issue is that sometimes we don't want to accept the rules, and it's, it's something, it's an issue that we have right across the country. As schools, we face that problem in our everyday school life where students believe that it is okay for them to be allowed to do certain things because their opinion it doesn't affect them learning and so on. So it is an issue that we have generally in our society. Um, we can't continue just to make rules to correct them, but we, what we need to do is ensure that the rules that we have are adhered to. Yeah, you say that and you know, it's true. It becomes a bigger part of the problem, a part of society because um, growing up, one of the things my mom would say to me is we need to nip it in the bud. Like we need to sort this out from here because then it becomes a major issue and you know, it can contribute to of course society and um, a lot of lawlessness and chaos. I wanna ask you though about the punishment because mm -hmm. some may say it's a bit too harsh because they're suspended now from this season and principal next season too. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, we, we, we have taken that drastic action. Um, we were actually looking at a longer period, but we came to the compromise that um, we will allow, first of all, we, we've not banned the junior players, so those players who are under 14, under, under 16, they will still be able to participate in our competitions. Those who are in their final year this year, obviously they will they will not be able to participate for the rest of the season. Um, those who have a year left in school, they will not be able to represent that school, but they, they are free to move to another school and participate. And obviously those who have two and three years left will be able to come back and represent their school. But we also believe that in, in both cases, we believe that students would have been aware of the ineligibility of the players involved. And we also say to our students that they have a responsibility to talk up. Um, we cannot continue as a country to believe that speaking the truth and revealing wrongdoing is something bad. So if we, we understand that, yes, you know, some students are involved and they're going to be banned. But we also say that you need to look out for the right things and ensure that you pay your part in holding others accountable around you. Yeah, uh, Keith, you know... Remember, I... remember we're talking about 17-year-olds, so these are not young. These are kids, but they are young adults, essentially. Yeah, approaching yeah. adulthood, yes. I, I understand yeah. the point you're making. And I want to make the point quickly to Keith that on Friday when this story broke and uh, the seriousness of uh, the issues with uh, Kellitz and Innswood would not have yet been, you know, fully explained... There, there was a sort of a knee-jerk reaction. Oh, wait, how, how comes these little-known schools get this big ban and the, the big guns like JC and, and uh, Heidel get just, just a points deduction? But I guess, you know, with the, with the fullness of the story, people would understand. Having said that, uh, can you talk briefly about the Heidel and the JC situations? Because Heidel uh, breached the, the quota um, yeah. eligibility situation. And the JC, if I'm correct, actually breached and the eligibility rule. 
which uh, I understand they may so, be appealing. Can you can you throw some light on that? Right, so first of all, let me say that I'm disappointed with the, with the as you put it, knee-jerk reaction. Um, while we did not put out all the details immediately, I think that ISA over 100 plus years would have earned enough credit for the general public to understand that we are going to make decisions that are upfront. We are not going to be carrying biases. And that generally we at ISA, we try our very best to be to be very fair. And by nature, as school principals, we want to ensure that the right things are done all the time, not just some of the time or most of the time. So I would hope that the general public accepts that as a governing body, we should be given the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. As it relates to these two other schools, in the case of Heidel, Heidel's situation is totally different. They, they, I, I, I don't think we have enough time to go through all the rules. But all the players at Heidel, each of them were eligible as an individual. The problem is that they were transfer students, and there is a quota as to the number of transfer students. There's a limit as to how many you can use at any one um, during any season. And at the start of the season, for the very first game, before declaring which players would be used as their quota, they went ahead and used all the transferred players. Right? So it is not that any of the players were ineligible as an individual, but the school used more than what was al allowed. And of course, we took away the points from them for that game. Right? Um, in the case of JC, it was a situation where I think there was um, some serious administrative blunder where a student was used who um, was inel ineligible because there was no um, proper enrollment of him that ensured that he had sat out a year at school, um, as would have been required of him, was coming from, well, actually, there was a city, there was some, how do I put it? He was coming initially from a private school and enrolled in two public schools at the same time. Mm. Okay, is it true that JC were appealing that, that ruling, though? No, they have not appealed the, ru the, the, the ruling as to the docking of the points. Um, they have questioned, and I think rightly so, the conditions of their probation. Yeah. I, I, and, I think they, and I think, and I think that's what, what that would have been a fair um, request to question, yeah, question and, the conditions that was not communicated to them. Okay, Keith. And on, on the final matter, we had Dwight Jeremiah in here. He's the coach of the William Nib School on, on Friday. And uh, I know you've, uh, Issa has already ruled on that William Nibb situation, but he is bringing a fairly strong case here that an error was made by, by the, 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 the referee in documenting who got a yellow card. And he seems to think that he has a strong case that he, the player should not have been penalized for three yellow cards because he actually did not. But right now, William Nibb lost the points because of that. And he feels that Issa should address it. Well, I have a strong case spending trying to get a re replay from London, and it doesn't appear as if I'm <laughs> going to get it because the referees, <laughs> although the referees admitted <laughs> that they, they made an error, the decision is not going to change. Yeah, we, we, know you're um, a Liverpool, we know you're a Liverpool fan, um, uh, Keith, and, and we, 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 we feel sorry for, <laughs> for Liverpool based on what happened. But are, are, but, but, are you using that case... To justify no, actually, Issa's actually position. Actually, this came about. We ruled on this before that that scenario. But so, <laughs> so just for for um, clarity, just for clarity, what actually happened yes. is that the the player in question had accumulated three yellow cards based on the referee reports from his previous three games. Right. Um, at the end of the third game, where he got that third that third yellow card, he should have missed the fourth game, and he actually went ahead and played. Apparently, William Nib is claiming that they were not aware that he had gotten a yellow card in the first game. So when they, when they raised questions about it, we said to them, this is the match card. This shows that he got a yellow card. They said, no, he did not. We went back to the referees and we said, the coach, the school is questioning. The referee said, no, I issued a yellow card to this player. It's a closed case. There's nothing else we can do after that. Mm. Yeah, well, um, Dwight was suggesting he had video evidence to suggest that the, the referee made an error. And I guess the insinuation well, 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 here is that the, the, re the referee didn't want to own up to the error and the organizer no, should have overruled his, his position. No, no, we can't organize and referee all the games as well. Right? And if a referee is 
It's not just that he, he wrote something and we left it at that. Yeah. We actually went back to him for verification, yeah. which he did. Right? And the issue of the videos, um, in terms of clarity, you know, for example, that when you do your games in the RSPL, yeah. um, you have video evidence that you can share the referees, but it's not at all games. Yeah. So you can't impose it on just the games that are televised. Yeah. Right? And similarly with us, Similarly with us, we don't have videos, video evidence at these games. And you're looking at the videos now, and I can't tell which players um, are being issued cards from it. I don't know the numbers of the players. Yeah. I know I have a side problem, but I don't think it is that bad either. <laughs> yeah, but he did suggest that he, he, he had purchased an app that magnified it and, and made his point well, we are, we have not. Well, we have not seen it, but if we did, it would not have changed our position. Yeah. But I think he he's, he's, he would have shared those videos with us, and we still can't see it. Mm. The okay. issue that he has is that he, in his mind, he already thinks that he knows what happened. So he's going to point to what he thinks he's, he's seen. Mm. Mm. I'm, but I'm, I think it's a close case. All right, all right, Keith, I'm going to leave it there. Just for the record, though, do you think Liverpool should get a replay? Um, I think it's 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 a difficult it's a difficult ask. If we start that um, in football, yes. we are going to end up in problems. But I think the, the, the referees should be held accountable. I yes. think football is a big business, and referees are paid to do a job. And um, players get yellow cards, red cards. Um, managers get red cards. Club gets clubs get fined. I don't think um, referees should at that level in particular should not be held accountable. Well, he, he, the, the VAR team had been held accountable because I think they were taking off the, the panel for, I think, two, two, two match weeks of football. Quite frankly, I think that's, that's not enough. I think it should be much more. I, I agree. But, but yeah. um, we, we'll see what happens. Um, sympathize with Liverpool. Let's hope that you can recover the three points I think, I think on, on the field points. and challenge for the title. Yeah, I don't think those three points will cost us the, 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 the trophy because we would have won the trophy by more than three points in 2024. <laughs> All right, Keith, we, we leave it there. Always a pleasure talking to you, man. All right, thanks, man. Sorry, Louis. Yeah, Keith Wellington there, the ISA boss, um, talking about the infractions with uh, Kellitz and Innswood uh, suspended from schoolboy football competition for the use of ineligible players. Back with more on the Sportsmite Zone after this.